positive thing happening in the CrossFit space these days is the understanding that there's more than the one hour yeah. at the box and not just more than the hour when it comes to nutrition and sleep, which are big components of it, but the broader umbrella being your mental health. Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez. And me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. So you're in the mafia? You know, I got asked that question a lot as a kid. We pretty much fit the stereotype too because my your dad parents- was a garbage man? My waste, mom's- It's waste management. Waste management. <laughs> my mom's parents owned- the waste management company in a small town in Ocala, Florida. And my father owned a pizzeria Italian restaurant. So Well, you guys are definitely in the mob. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. How many, how many people sure. has your father murdered? That I was, mean That's not how it I, works. He doesn't technically do the murdering. Uh, yeah. yeah. And plausible if he does, deniability. I don't know. Yeah, plausible. You don't know it's hidden from would the you, family. Would yeah. it surprise you is your is your father still around? Mm-hmm. If, you know, in the future he passes away. And it turns out he was... He was a Don. Yeah. What, how surprised? It, One to ten. Like, ten's like, I had no idea. My dad's not that kind of guy, so I'd be That's pretty surprised. Think. My grandfather, um, the one that owned the sanitation company, I would not be surprised. But you don't think it passed down? No. I think the the, the restaurant is just kind of like a... Uh, it's a front. Yeah. It is. It is. For what? Who knows? My grandfather was a bookie. I don't think I've ever told you that. I believe it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that fits many of the stereotypes. He used to tell people, I, I didn't, I don't, he passed away when I was like 10, but I guess he used to tell people he was a butcher, but he was mm. actually a, like a boogie. Yeah, because it's illegal. Well, especially, I mean, it still is, right? Uh, we can go on like the internet and gamble. I think there are both legal and illegal versions. Yeah, he was the illegal on, kind. Yeah. So, <laughs> and is the pizza place still open? It is not. He sold it, and it has not been the same since. Did you, did um? When did he sell it? I was like seventeen. Oh, so I like was in high school. Pizza Review wasn't there. No, this was before that. Has it come re- since new ownership? No, it's like turned over two times since then. It's not. What would you rate the pizza? Uh, terrible. Now or when you were a kid? No, when I was a kid, when my when my father owned it, it was the best in town. In Ocala, like ten out of ten. In Ocala, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pizza, I'll make a confession right now. Did you have pizza last night? I didn't have pizza, but I did have a microwave microwave calzone when I got home oh to the gosh. hotel at like twelve thirty. Oh, they, were they sell them at the lobby? Yeah, I walked in. I was like, oh, I'm hungry. I was like, oh, I was like, eh, whatever, I'll eat it. A little hot pocket. Hey, it was. It was. I'll be honest with you. It was delicious. <laughs> Can you fix him with his mental fit? Well, I'm not broken. I have feel no guilt That's whatsoever. That's why you need to fix him because he doesn't understand how broken. I feel no guilt. I'm hey, fine. listen, we are not. People are not broken. We can't say that. Damn it. I just, Externalize the problem. His choices are. Not broken. good or broken. Not him. <laughs> Your choices are broken. I, I have no beef with my choices. Mm, interesting. Because I understood the ramifications. I'm not convincing myself that it was a good choice. I just chose not to do it. So when you did that, what was going through your mind? I what can't wait this? to eat this. <laughs> you, but, I mean, you were out. Mm-hmm. We're, we're here at Gas still. You're presenting. You just delivered a keynote. Mm-hmm. And... You're out to dinner, then you're drinking. Mm-hmm. I was drinking, out to dinner, drinking, drinking. again. <laughs> and, and at some point, I guess you would have realized, like, I'm going to be hungry. I'm going to make some choices. But I ate, I ate many tacos at the thing. Those were good. They were fantastic. Fajitas. Yeah. And then you still got back to the hotel and were like, I'm going to make a bad choice now. I was like, I'm hungry. Moderation, Jason. And... Full disclosure, part of me was said, I will probably feel better if I eat this in the morning than if I don't. Yeah, well, okay, okay. So it was a healthy choice. Yeah. (laughs) I was was saying, well, my future self is going to thank me for this. He had one, not ten. Yeah. Yeah, but those those things are either ice cold or burn your face off. Well, it was both. It was frozen, (laughs) and then when I put it in my mouth, I definitely burned the roof of my mouth. It was too hot. 
cold or hot on the outside, then the middle is like still ice cold. I remember like can never get it. I right. still have scarring in my mouth from hot pockets as a kid. Did you ever eat lean pockets when you were younger and you're like, I'm making a healthy choice? Oh, we didn't really eat no. hot pockets or lean pockets. Um, I think there's a new documentary out on Pop Tarts. Well, if there is, I need to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a I think it's about like the evolution and how Pop Tarts changed the breakfast industry. Like Oh, you think that was yeah, the catalyst to like eating bad food for breakfast? I don't know if that's the if the if that's the premise of the movie. I just I remember seeing something about this. It's a evolution of the Pop Tart or whatever. It is weird. I mean, let's let's dig in. Nutrition. What's your exact time? We've, we've started the podcast. Mental the specialist. I, I, I'm like, how did we get here? Are you, are you a mental specialist? What's the term? Mental health professional. Mental health professional. A mental specialist? Is that what that sure. was the terminology? That's the title you came up with? I think that's a good title. Yeah. It's, it's not far Are off. you mental? Yeah, like I'm totally mental. mental. Yeah. But think, thinking about that, in the United States... We've made breakfast dessert, especially for kids. Yeah. Cereal. It's super sugary. It's probably one of the worst meals people eat. And it's exacerbated by like Meaning like in, in from a yeah. from a carb, uh, probably from a glycemic load index. If you were to canvas what people eat for breakfast, I, bet I would venture to bet it is the, probably the highest meal in glycemic load. Yeah, and... and I mean, Starbucks made it worse, but also I think in the miseducation of nutrition, because most people that are getting all those carbs, bowl of cereal, glass of orange juice. This is good. They think they're eating healthy. Yeah. I mean. Those people are broken. They're making <laughs> broken choices. My, my, I, my parents, they're not broken. My parents FaceTime the other night and Madison was eating bacon. And they were like, what? Bacon's bad? Like this and that? I was like. First of all, this is the healthiest thing she's eaten today. It was like she wanted cookies, and she's satisfied with bacon. But this is another because you're you you're both old enough to remember this. <laughs> can we th- can we can like we said, no. well if 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 you're not probably thirty five or older, like this would make no she's sense to you in her twenties, right? So, can we talk about the dramatic shift in like? sodium intake that has happened over the past 30 years where it's just like salt is the devil and she's like you should put salt in your drink three times a day yeah, like that's is. where we're at now yeah <laughs> what do you what do you think's caused that misinformation yeah. i mean nutrition information's all over the map right we literally went from it's like ridiculous. do not put salt on that hamburger to take this packet and put it in your water well and eggs are terrible for you bacon's terrible yeah. all those things that is true there's no And I get it's not the same, but it's, it's, it is an interesting, like, well, we were literally with 180 the other direction. But I suppose you, it's just, well, I think you're speaking to a very, very small market of people. I still think you ask any of our parents, they're like, salt's bad for you. <laughs> not right? my dad. He's like, give me the salt. Yeah, uh, it, have, He's so. Has your dad, like, my parents are somewhat coming around to this guy knows what he's talking about. We should listen a little bit. Do yours listen to me? Yeah. Uh, mm, depends on the day. But like, use the salt thing, like, or is he just like salt? He likes salt. Okay. He's like, let me live. I'm like, okay. What What are some of the changes? I have limited days left. Let me eat the salt. He's really old school. How old's your father? Uh, sixty six. Oh, Gonna be sixty seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. What are some of the things you've influenced him on when it comes to nutrition? Um, well, when he comes by me, he gets healthy meals. So, you know, I've gotten him to think about his plate, making sure that we're incorporating vegetables like with the, the protein. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, uh, making good choices, moderation. So we, we don't typically keep that stuff in our fridge. Uh, <laughs> So he's, he always associates me with health. So he knows if he's coming by me, we're going to have a good, healthy, wholesome meal. We make good choices together. I'm like, hey, if you want those intimate donuts, not at my house. Ooh, intimate. Like the, bl- the, bl- the, the chocolate, chocolate donuts yeah, is his so favorite. Good. How, so, how are, are, do you think intimate donuts are different than selfish donuts? Oh, Nate. <laughs> Nate bought some selfish donuts years ago, and he's never. He, we, go, we saw him at a gas station. Oh, my gosh. Where were we? This is definitely a broken decision. Yeah. <laughs> we stopped in a gas station. We're all hungry. We're tired. We're filmed. I think it was in Tennessee, actually. Was it? It might have been, actually. Is it? And he comes out with one donut. 
Nice. And that donut was for a donut. really delicious looking yeah. donut for the record. It was, like it was like almost a some gourmet gas donut. Station donuts just look good. And it was forever known as the selfish the donut. The selfish donut. That's funny. Yeah. But Endeman donuts are good. Yeah. What would your father's dinner be if it wasn't that? Like lasagna? Yeah, he's a pasta um you know, lasagna, baked spaghetti. Um, so sauce is always made at mm-hmm. home and made with a number of different ways. We got to get um, to tailwinds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've, he's made pizzas and brought them up from Ocala, and then we've just heated them. So he's got a buddy who owns a pizzeria still. You're about like three hours from Ocala now? It's like two. Yeah. Hour 45. Um, and he will help him out, go in and make yeah. pizzas. He taught them how to make pizzas and throws them and everything. Yeah. So he gets pretty much free pizzas. So we're like, hey, bring some of those pizzas up with you next time you come. Fire oven, normal oven? Brick, yeah. Yeah, brick, like a brick fire, yeah. Cool. Did you ever live in New York? I did. Where? So when my father immigrated over, he moved to New York, Brooklyn. My mom grew up in Bayport, Long Island. And then they moved from New York to Florida in Ocala and met each other, coincidentally. My husband's from Long Island. He's from the town over from where my mom grew up. Um, <clears throat> so when I graduated with my bachelor's, I wanted to get out of Florida, wanted to see roots, go to New York, do something different. So we had met in college, my husband and I, and we moved back up to New York. Um, and we did the New York, Florida thing a couple of times. So longest stint was like seven years in New York. Lived oh, up where? there, in owned a home. Long mm-hmm. uh, practice, did grad school there. Uh, and then started working in the field there, had my first son there. And then I was pregnant with my second son. We moved back to Florida permanently, and we've been there for 10 years now. Yeah, because you have definite Long Island vibes. <laughs> you, I mean... I, I, I've been told I have a little bit of, like, a New York, Long yeah, Island yeah. vibe. That's the, it's hard to tell. Is it New York or is it Italian, both? I mean, it, yeah, they're yeah, similar. They could, yeah, they could be... You could definitely confuse the two for sure. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's talk a little bit about mental fit. You, I think a positive thing happening in the CrossFit space these days is the understanding that there's more than the one hour yeah. at the box and not just more than the hour when it comes to nutrition and sleep, which are big components of it, but the broader umbrella being your mental health. Are you, are you seeing that shift in the CrossFit space? I am. Um, I think that on a higher level, there are more people coming out about it, like in the sport. Meaning like they're, uh, they're using, o- it's okay talking about it? You yeah. Mean, yeah. They're like using the, their platform. The, I um, saw like Haley Adams being one, right? Yeah. Who and, else? Who else? Um, uh, well, both of them were the young females. Uh, Mal O'Brien. Mal O'Brien, yep. yep. And, you know, some people saying, like, hey, I'm stepping away for mental health reasons and personal reasons or to work on myself. Other people just sharing things that they're doing have made some, like, mindset references or, you know, I'm journaling for my, you know, ADHD. I saw something like that recently. And so they're just being a little bit more vocal about some of their challenges or some of the things that they're focusing on that surround that concept of mental health and mindset. And, of course, they have a big reach, right? Like, mm-hmm. they have a big platform. So anytime you've got that, people tend to resonate with that. They will, you'll, you'll see some comments about it, um, which is great. And, you know, I've been pretty vocal about it in the space as well and worked on this mental fit mindset course that got CEU approved last year. How many CEUs? Um, seven. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really good. It. And it's the first mental health CEU approved course by CrossFit in history. Which is really cool. That's cool. I'm going to take yeah. it because I'm doing Diesel Day in a couple of weeks. And then I told Athena I was going to go to her course. And I think if I take that, I'll be all set. There you go. Um, so it's been really cool to talk about it. What were the level four, for the record. I don't even it. know what the requirement is, but the... Um, 50 CEUs. Five wow. CEUs? Yeah, every three That's years. more... That's more than level three? Yeah. Um, That's more CEUs than my license as a mental health professional. It's a doctor. Yeah, we're, ba- a doctor. we're both doctors, yeah. essentially. Um, what were, so you, how many breakouts have you had this weekend? Two? Two breakouts, one have. keynote. You did your keynote today, how right? Many keynotes I didn't. are happening? <clears throat> Everybody gets a keynote except me. Correct. You gotta. The... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like keynote implies one. No. That's something, <clears throat> that's changed over the years. Like, keynote 
It's like vice presidents. Like, there's like, 18 of them. Like, keynote just means like a longer stint of... How long was your talk? Uh, one hour. So was mine. Yeah, but... In front of the entire group. Yeah, yeah. Breakout is like you're segmenting I a, off. I told you, I had an exclusive group of people. That's awesome. If it, would, if it was a good turnout, you might get the keynote next year. <laughs> Can we talk about Jay's... His... What, what's happening right now with Jay? He's, these insecurities that are popping out. Well, we're working through them. I feel I'm like trying to I'm empower broke. him. I'm not yeah. broken. You know, okay. you're not broken. I believe on keynotes is broken. Yeah. But you each you're, had a keynote. Uh, we did. But what were your breakouts about? You uh, did two different ones, right? Actually, they were the same. It's a Christine um, show here at Gas. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it took me three years. You got to start somewhere. You will be, when I first came to Gas three years ago, I was just on a panel and answered a couple of questions. Is this, what year is this for Gas three? No. I have no idea, actually. Nicole, by the way, doing a bang-up job. Fantastic event. So if you guys yeah. can come to this event in the future, you absolutely should yeah, try to make so it. Yeah, so this, actually, it's already announced, right? I don't know the dates, but... Uh, is it? Well, well this it is will be by the time this airs, yes. This, it's going to be in Nashville again next year. Uh-huh. And rumor is, I don't know if this is true, it's at the Virgin Hotel? That's, I think, the goal. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not it going to be here it because... Is. It is. Did she Virgin. confirm? Yeah. Be, it so is for sure. By the time this comes out, that will have been announced. Uh, and I don't this know isn't if she's just for yet, affiliate but. owners. Coaches can come. Coaches can come. Yeah, so nutrition coaches or coaches and affiliate and owners. You don't have yeah. to work with us or HSN. No, there's yeah. there's a uh, there's about 200 people here, I think. Chuck yeah. Roswell was here. I mean, Mike G. Boz was here earlier this morning. Mike spoke. So this is this is a great event. It's legit. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's the biggest it's been this year. And and you get to see multiple. Some might say too many keynotes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, I'll be delivering a keynote. Yeah, if you year. attend, you get a keynote. Yeah. <laughs> but Maybe you, by your third year. It took me three years to get a keynote. You went from panel, and what was last year? Last year, uh, I was on a panel, and I had a breakout. So I'm already a step ahead. First you already year. step, see? First year Look at you, breakout. first year. And then this year, I got a keynote and breakout. So Fern got a keynote on year one. Look at this o guy. Overnight success. There Overnight you go. Success. 45 years in the making. <laughs> so and what, was your, what were you asking her about? The, uh, well, the breakouts. Well, uh, so same topic, them. but it was just geared towards, one was geared towards coaches and one was a little bit more uh, geared towards um, owners. And we talked about basically integrating mindset work into your gym, into your affiliate um, and, and or nutrition coaching, um, how to talk about that, how mm -hmm. to navigate that and, you know, how to start incorporating that conversation as a part of the work that you do. Um, so what are the what are the high what are the high points in there, uh, of those of like how do you start doing that? Well, I do you want to give the breakout again, but <laughs> like yeah. um, that would be a third breakout today. Ooh. If I did, we'll call it a Let's keynote. Keep making a keynote. keynote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the audience is much larger, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, what we're talking about is how to destigmatize mental health. Okay. You know how to normalize that conversation. Um, open it up so that we are making that a part of the conversation. We're talking about mental health, not mental illness, and how health is about mental and physical health, um, and why we should be focusing on our minds in addition to our bodies and training both. Um, how to allow for those questions and conversations to come up and not feel nervous by them or scared by them, being prepared with resources um, and being able to facilitate you know, assistance and help with providers in your area when it comes to divulging information that's bigger than you. Uh, but then what you can do to be a part of the support system and how to bring those highlights into the work that you do and conversations and into your coaching. Um, and we've got this course um, that prepares coaches and owners on how to do that specifically and a ton of content, um, activities that you can do, you know, printable like worksheets and things like that, workbooks. Um, and how to encourage those behaviors outside of the gym as well. You brought up an in interesting distinction that I hadn't considered until you just said it, but the differences between mental health and mental illness. Yeah. Is there a difference or is that just the term we That's should That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. No, there is because mental health is something that we all have, but we're not all mentally ill. And I know you're going to say he's mentally like he's. You know us too well. Too well. Too well. Don't call him mentally it. ill. So in no, this but scenario, he don't have mental health. Either. Yeah, yeah. So in this scenario, who's broken? Him because Nobody's he's mentally broken. ill, or uh, me for calling him out on it? Okay. Nobody's broken. Uh, your 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 choice of words is broken. Let's reframe them. So, but you said everybody has mental health. Sure. But that's 
Is that true? Of course. But that's like saying, hmm. I was going to do you like, not have physical health? Well, that's where I was going with it. Like, at what point do you not? If you, so it's the same thing. Sick, well, fit, continuum. And now we're just looking at the mental side of you. So, so it's mental. So you could fitness, conceivably right? not have mental health you be sick. if you're sick. Correct. Okay. That's, that's when you would be okay, yeah, ill. Okay. Right. That's, right, right. So, so that's, that's what he was saying. Said, the so degree you were of health. Us the benefit of the doubt that we have mental health. I I believe you do. How healthy your mental health is is up for determination just on how healthy is your physical health. So sure. someone that has mental illness just has is poor mental health. Correct. And this is the right terminology we should be using? Yes. And somebody who is both mentally and physically fit exceeds that fitness on the continuum. And then, so just no different than fitness, someone that is sick just has poor health. You know, poor physical health. Across broad time years of their life. Yeah. And then we, we see the, the chronic disease that comes with that. Just like you have the physical chronic disease with illness, you have chronic disease with mental illnesses. That's, you know, depression, well, would, Yeah, I was going to say, anxiety. Well, would, okay. Those Examples are all of those would be. chronic diseases. Those are all chronic diseases? Yeah, mental illness. And mental illness is plaguing us these days. You know, it's, it's up there why with the rest take, of it. Why is it? Is it I've, yeah, I have thoughts on this too, but or well, questions, not thoughts. Right. Is it that it's more apparent now or is it, maybe that wasn't the right word. Do we see it more now because we're just more aware of it? That right. Like question. it's like autism, right? Like. Is there more autism now, or were we just not knowing what autism was 20 years ago? It's been an issue, but I think COVID exacerbated it. Oh, that, I think we're probably and, all in agreement. And on that's it. why it's more prevalent. It's been more prevalent since then, and we, we haven't even recovered from that. Like, we're not even close. We're, oh, I, don't, I don't even know a if we've lot of begun time. a course correction, to be honest with you. We so. haven't, because the numbers are still high. But if it's and, chronic, can something like that exacerbate it? Something like COVID? Yeah. 100%. Even, what would chronic disease be defined as? Essentially like ongoing, but on, uh, ongoing or, but you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but like, the, like I feel like the layman's term for chronic disease it, it, on the medical side, I don't know if this would be relevant on the mental health side, but when I say medical, I mean like uh, physiological, but the, those are, be, those are behaviors. But for the most part, like if you have chronic disease, that is directly related to a behavior that then man itself manifests itself in some sort of illness. And I don't know if that it would be the same. Right. That was, I think, why I was asking that. Yeah. You know, it, it can be reversed in the same way. Like there are habits and lifestyle choices that we can participate in that are going to help us to reverse and prevent mental chronic some disease. Some mental illness is like schizophrenia, for example, right? Yeah, yeah. some of it is. Not- yeah. Right. But that's the same thing with certain, you know, cancer. physical illnesses. Right. 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 Yeah. You have yeah. Gotcha. It's very Whatever. similar. Yeah, yeah. So m- much of this we can, what we're saying is at the affiliate level, help with. No different than fitness. Yeah. So walk us through that because I think affiliate owners have no idea what to do when it comes to this. Yeah. They're ill-equipped, and it's because of a number of reasons, right? We don't talk about it. We don't prepare them. When you go to your level one, level two, you're not hearing about this. There's zero talk of zero. this one or two. Zero. That I can so think of. It's, it, you're relying on CEUs, like the specialty courses. You know, that's okay, too, right? Which is like, fine. It's like a, any, any um, accreditation, like you should learn subsidiary topics. Yeah. When I got my master's degree in marriage and family therapy and specialized in working with relationships— that's pretty much what the focus was. But they don't go into detail on addiction or trauma. No, I had to do that. Important. So all super important. So it was up to me to continue my education post my degree to further expand my knowledge and understanding. Um, I think that's where we miss the mark in what we do as affiliate owners and coaches is we don't spend a whole lot of time continuing our education. We just stay with our level one or stay with our level two and we coach and we don't get outside of that to expand our knowledge to help us to specialize more. Um, and I don't know if that's just, we don't know what we don't know. It's not promoted and talked enough about. Like when we leave with a degree in my field, it's like you have to go and get your continuing education. Like they promote that. They tell you that. Um, so I think that's something that we could do on HQ level is really trying to promote our 
trainers to continue their education? Part of that is not all trainers achieve the level three, right? That, so yeah. Not yes, all. there's not even a requirement for them to. There, there's no, uh, there's no incentive or requirement. Like to, if to, I have level three, I need to continue education. I have to now, go find something. Now I yeah. need something. Yeah. Now I need but something. But you can <clears throat> remain a level that one might or change, two though. forever. Well. There's gym been owners about, can't. Yeah, gym yeah, there, owners can't. There's been, there's been talk about changing that whole pipeline and how that works, which sure, I don't but, disagree with. Yeah, but no. even then you can, like, take to re level three, I think you need 35 every three years, which really is not a lot. Every three? No, that's not bad. You know, it's, no. like, it's like one course a year. You take the Olympic lifting, gymnastics, and aerobic capacity, but you've learned nothing about mental health. And I think it's easy to get lost and well this is what happens in the gym but that's the whole premise of this if you want to because i don't think it's just about improving mental health which is of course important but it's also if i improve my members mental health from a business owner perspective they're going to be better long-term members it's a retention tool yeah. well you become a more pivotal to their overall success yeah right? it's not just you're more physically fit but hey i i show up as a different person now and I got a job promotion because I got some things in order and reprioritized like how I spend my time and energy because I, you know, defeated some identity stuff. You know, it has, you know, he and I spent, you know, a lot of time doing some of that work and it's, it can be, it, it's one of those odd topics that you hear about and it's kind of like woo-woo, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you do some of the work, and you're like, oh, this shit works. Well, yeah. can I relate that to us with Affiliate U? So we push people to do their values, their mission statement, and so many times it's like, I did the budget. I did the creating lifers. I did this. I, yeah, but you haven't done values and mission. Ah. And then when they do it, they're like, oh, Ali talked about it today. Like every decision I make goes back to this, right? Yeah. But it's the same thing. It's like well, that's, it's because it's hard. Yeah. Well, it's hard. It's heavy. This, right? It's deep. It's it's, it's woo woo. It's woo woo. <laughs> well, it's it's well it's it's. I think it's challenging because it's not it's not like a. You don't get this when you're done with doing that work. Where if I do one of those exercises, I'll have a thing, right? It's right here. It's tangible. It's objective. I can put my hands on. I can yeah. see it. Versus if I do that. I don't, there's no physical thing. There's a lot of other things that'll happen, but it's, it's harder to identify or, or, or show yourself like I've, I've got this result from doing the work. Like you have to go through that and then a situation has to unfold at which you can apply the skill sets and now you're like, Oh, there it is yeah. right there. You know? <clears throat> so where do we begin? Why, why do we have these, by the way? Are we, we going to do an exercise? He, we're going to, we're he going wanted, to a concert later. He wa later. Okay, <laughs> perfect. He wanted to uh, unpack some stuff. Oh, I don't. I don't know if you want to do that here, but what I would Why, recommend. Is this heavy? It can get heavy. Can we do the light version? <laughs> is, there, is there a scaled <laughs> version? <clears throat> there is. I mean, essentially, this is representation of. I feel your, like gave it to me. Push it down. Yeah. Into so the water. The, everyone has one of these internally. A and beach ball? Yeah, a beach ball. You, you have an internal I feel like beach that ball. You swallowed one with that hot pocket last night. <laughs> You've got an internal beach ball. And this is basically where your experiences and your emotions and your sensations are stored. Okay. And your ability to regulate those comes into play depending on what you were taught. Some people do it well, most people do not. And that's pretty evident by the numbers um, you know, that exist out there on overall well being. Um, so the idea with this is to write down your experiences, your adversities, your traumas, um, and learning how those things pop up when you're trying to resist and hold a beach ball down mm -hmm. and that becomes hard and you can do that only for so long, but then at some point there's going to be a trigger or a catalyst that's going to make that thing pop and it's going to create a big splash and that never goes well. And if we can learn to work through and unpack some of those, we can have a little bit better of a grasp and help to bring it up to the surface and move it around much more methodically, naturally and realistically, because we're just working through those emotions. We are feeling them and they're not big. They're not bigger than us. We are controlling them. They are not controlling us. 
So this just becomes a metaphor, and I like it. Encourage that's a, that's people. A good, it's yeah. a good. It's a good. It's a good and effective it's metaphor. Good, I like it. It's good visual. No, yeah. it made me actually think of one that happened to me recently. Go I mean, for Athena. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I mean, Fern knows this. Like growing up. Is this what you talk about at the mastermind? Being fat. But yeah. Um, no, no, but oh. this was like growing up, like one of my very first memories, um, was my mom freaking out about finances because they were going through divorce and all this. Oh, I know where you're going. Right. Mm-hmm. So like that still plays a role. Right. And I've yeah. gotten way better about it. Um, for me, but I have a wife, right. And two kids. So I'm pretty good about it, but there are triggers. And like, I had one, eh, maybe like, um, it was silly, like. She came home with this toy that was immediately broken, right? And I was like, don't say anything. Just keep it to yourself. (laughs) And then I literally couldn't control myself, right? And I don't yell or anything. I'm like, hey, what's that thing you bought? And she knows. And I'm like, as I'm doing it, I'm like, I should not be doing this, (laughs) right? And (laughs) And it's not the $16, like... In the same breath, she's like, hey, I think I want to take this course for this or that. I'm like, sign up. How much is it? Like, I don't care. It was like it was wasteful. Yeah. Right? And um, But that was like the beach ball. I was like, there it went. Shit. Like, little yeah. splash. Not too bad. Like, controlled myself a little bit. But, and you know, that's still in, like, no matter what you do, you can only, Athena was kind of telling me this. Like, you can only push it down, for, and you just said it for so long. For so long. And then it's like the silly thing might, oh, I got sidetracked. Pop. Yeah, right. and at, at some point, it's it's something so minor that just sets it off, but it's because you've been holding it for so long, you cannot hold it anymore. And it was because we were, Fern and I preach budget, we do it, she does not look at it, right? And it's not, she does not spend frivolously and all this, but it's like, it was that going on. I was like, oh, another Amazon box, cool, another Amazon, oh, hey. <laughs> and it was like, and then it was like, you showed up with this, I think she's buying things as the name into my house, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's like you sh- that's one little thing sets it off. That's and it. What was cool for me was it did help me. Like, I got to a new layer of it where it's like it's not the money. It's when I feel like it's wasteful. And by telling her that, she understood it. Yeah. And so having that awareness is key. And then it, it helps you to kind of work through, understand a little bit more, and then you're just gaining more control by that. Yeah, because now you, you know, get it. Now I know, well, one, before you do this again, let's we just talk. And, you know, Rod's, my wife, she's funny because she's like, I don't spend a lot. I'm like, it's not that you spend a lot. You just don't have a reference because yeah. you don't look at the budget, which she's like, but I see you get stuff. I'm like, yes, but I look at the budget. It's in the line item. Yeah, yeah. like I, I, it's like, and I tried to use the analogy of it's like working out and just being like, throw some weight on. Yeah. Right, it's like, what movement are we doing? What you know, like, <laughs> what weight should the, I use? I'm like, what are we doing? I don't know. Yeah, the like, intention. Yeah, yeah. And, the and, intention. And it was a good conversation to have. And she had told me and this is you know, in the past, she's like, sometimes you say things that make me feel this way, but it's because of this. And I was able to say, well, that's the same feeling I have with this. It's like you're not doing the wrong thing. It's just triggering this beach ball. Yeah, to pop up. So what are some what are some ways as a gym owner cuz this can feel I mean, probably the elephant in the room here is is this whole topic can feel kind of dangerous sure mm-hmm. meaning like it's kind of wacky out there like you're right afraid now of what words world. to say right this is you're talking about all it's like this feels it feels like an un terrain that cannot be navigated in any sort of like reasonable manner meaning like I have like cardinal directions aren't what we thought they were and like you there's certain things that are off limits now that we that used to be no, and it's just like where do i even start you know before talking about like oh we could talk about your mental health and they're like somebody's blasting you because you didn't know they use different pronouns you're like oh shit like we can't how do i how do i how do i back out of that and then try to move forward so i, I think that's why it's probably not as prevalent is because it's really scary to to get into. Well, and it's because we keep that stigma attached to it. And all we see is what we see on social media. It's like watching the news. Which is all good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
And that's just creating um, and perpetuating an ongoing problem. That's not reality. And I mean, in the gym, you know, if you specifically, we build rapport with our members. We have connections. We have trust. It's not like we just go around and start being like, hey, so tell me about your mental health. Like, that's not the first thing I would say to someone. I would build trust and rapport. And then, of course, through that, someone's going to want to open up to me because they trust right. me. Um, well, and it happens all the time. I, I would actually, we may not bring it up, but I mean, you're people a box owner. Yeah, but if you think about how quickly people bring it up. Some more than others. Oh, Be, some, you just, asked the right question. Yeah, some people but will. random strangers, like I, you, how many consults have you done within within two minutes of meeting this person? They are dumping heavy things on you. You're like, what? oh, we well, got yeah. here quick. Why is that, though? It's like somebody walks in and we're not afraid to talk about fitness. Tell us about your background. You know, obviously, you look at someone, you can tell somewhat about like where they are on their journey, but mental health, we're like, can't touch that. I mean, I personally think that certain questions should be a part of the give, intake give us some. situation. Where are some? Um, so when we're asking, like, what are your physical limitations, you are any medications, anything we should know about um, under any, you know, health care, I would add in things like, are you on any medications, um, medical or mental health medications, or are you under the care of a mental or physical health care professional? Do you ask these at Tailwind? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Stupid question. You can ask that, right? Why can't you? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I mean, that. That's I you saying. ask their physical, you want to know anything that is going to be relevant that could impact their health when they're under your care in that, you know, onboarding. So in that intake, when you're. I'm, yeah, no, I'm on board you know with all mean? of that. I just so, had to consider like. I didn't know if that would might be off limits, but I mean, some not. of these medications have side effects, and we I would want to know if you're on a mental health medication, and then we're taking you and we're doing an onboarding session, mm -hmm. and you have a reaction, and I need to know about that. Right. Okay. That's so. fair. So. So you can kind of dip your toe in the water with that, and you know they may or may not tell you. Um, it's just a way of navigating that, and then, you know, you can provide resources along the way. And what are some of the ways that you can keep this topic, you know, present and available on daily? You know, we talk strength and Metcon. You can do nutrition talks instead of strength and Metcon. Yeah. How do you start to implement some of these things at the box? Um, you know, we, we usually reframe it in the form of, like, mindset. Like, okay, what's your mindset going to be in this workout? It's – there's some workouts that are super mentally challenging, right? Like, you hit the pain cave. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to really – you know, be mindful of your mental longer, state it's longer, okay, it's you know, minutes. there's lots of ways to kind of incorporate that in there. Give them a focal point, um, maybe a mindset tip, um, a quote. Um, we, we just, we are very strategic. We put it in our newsletters. We put it in our conversations. Um, we approach people individually after class. Hey, how's things going? Um, and it just kind of unfolds That's organically. That's the most impactful ones. Right? Yeah. And I think, Maybe we're jaded because, one, especially the two of us, like the people we hang out with, right? Like you forget not everyone has positive influences in their life. Yeah. Or they're – I would argue most people do not. Right. And, I mean, you talk to Marcus or anyone on our team, and it's like, oh, I feel better. They uplifted me or pushed me in a good way. And they're also probably not seeking out the good stuff on social media. Like I – only follow and watch like motivational people, right? Where a lot yeah. of people probably go down those rap. So, it might a point being like, oh, like putting something in a newsletter, or a little mindset thing might seem small and insignificant <coughs> to some people listening, but it's for others, that's a huge thing. That might be the only positive quote they hear all day. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting to the point now with like this mental fit course. People are doing challenges around mindset and nutrition. Like, like what are? Um, so we did a, we expanded upon the course with HSN, and you can implement um, like a twenty eight day challenge. So it's nutrition and mindset, fitness and accountability, and through that challenge, they're working on activities specifically around mindset. Um, they're talking about it. There's videos that they get to watch. Will be an example of like a, an activity in that in that 28 day piece from on from a mindset standpoint. Um, we might talk about like the pros and cons of change. What does it look like to stay the same? What does it look like to change? What are some barriers to your success? 
Um, we might do something like what we call setting the stage. Who are the people in your life? Where do they currently exist? Who, you, you know, you, you're <clears throat> conducting a performance, the performance of life. Who do you want in your front row, second row, back row? Who doesn't even belong in, you know, the arena? In the theater. They yeah. need to be out in the parking lot. Like, identifying, and it's essentially identifying your support systems and the people that become barriers to your success. So it's activities like that, similar to the values where they're writing something down and they're working through it on paper and they have this visualization of what that looks like and kind of taking it from the mind and putting it out in front of them and being able to go, wow, I didn't think about it like that and didn't realize that I have such a strong feeling towards certain people and, you know, maybe that person doesn't belong having so much access to me. Such a crazy thing to think about like that where you're like, hey, write it down on paper. Just the number of things that come to light when you just put pen to paper is wild. It's so five minutes. Even if you didn't know what you were doing, you just like you look at it and you read, you write, say, hey, write your thoughts down, put some thoughts yeah. down, you're like, oh a little a brain to, dump. There's a lot mm-hmm. to unpack there. I mean, I that's why I've con I have like multiple no like most of it is just gibberish, but I'm just constantly writing down things in there. Just be like, oh, how do I feel about that? I'm like, okay, nothing, move on. Uh, but sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need to sit on that one for a little bit. <laughs> I write stuff on my phone. I mean, things come to my mind all the time in random times. So I find I that pen is very different than it is. typing for some. I don't know why. but It definitely is, and I encourage me. that. But if I'm in my car or on the go and something comes to my mind that I feel like is going to be impactful. Yeah. I'm like jotting it no, down. No, no, for sure. Because I'll I, never I, remember it. You'll never remember. I just, I, I know, there's a distinct difference between the physical act of writing versus putting it in some sort of technology. And uh, it's it's something that I have observed many times. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. What song makes you feel better? <laughs> um, It depends. Well, what song makes you feel better? You by Chris Young. It's our wedding song. Is it? Mm-hmm. What I, song makes you feel better? I got a lot. Um, that one brings a smile to my face every time, no matter what I'm doing. So many. I was thinking about because it worked out. Like I have a couple songs that are weird, but when I work out, they get me in the. You ever hear Marshall Tucker Band? Can't you see? Yep. Like I love that for a workout song for some reason. I get it. Um, and then uh, there's a. A band called ALO, Animal Liberation Orchestra. There's a song called Waste in Time. That makes me, like, just positive. Nice. Uh, all right, your turn. I mean, I'd say the most recent one, um, there's one by uh, Chris Pena, I think is how you say his last name. It's called War. It's a pretty cool song. I think I know what song you're referring to. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah. What's your wedding song? <laughs> um, Did you forget? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. I mean, we kind of had two, but we have like a primary. What's your what we? Wait, how, why'd you get two? Wedding? Hold on, is that a Sicilian thing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Why not? Right. Um, it's a it's a Shania Twain song. This kiss? No, not this kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Forever and always. Cool. And then what was the backup? The second. Um, it's. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Um, Her husband. Oh, he's got the camera on him. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not significant, so don't. What worry. is it? You, oh, you do not want to share? It's called Push. Um, Push it by Salt and Pepper? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. No. It, you probably haven't heard of it. All right. Okay. Um, What's going on? It's an old school song. Yeah. But the primary one is Forever and Always. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're all mm. far off topic. So, yeah, where did we, how did we get there? I, you know, you said it doesn't in the matter. Car. We just we took a little detour. Yeah. And we're we back. did. You said in the car, you were writing down the notes, and it made me think like, oh, what song do you listen to mm. in the car? You know what? Sometimes I don't listen to anything. Oh, so much quiet. Like, yeah. Oftentimes, I just drive in silence. I am incapable of silence. That is such a dumb thing to say, isn't it? Isn't no, it just, it just when people he sleeps. He when, sleeps. when He's people still silence. when people say that they um. <laughs> don't like to be in silence. It just makes me think about a statement that kind of sticks out for me, which is um, people at war with themselves find quiet noisy. I I will fully acknowledge and accept that. Reminds me of the statement, people incapable of silence are broken. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my gosh, did you not learn anything? How long have we been doing this? Oh. I, you know, can I say this? I've noticed that about myself, and I purposely seek the quiet because I'm like, I think I need, like, you I would do. go for walks. And I'm like, oh, let me put on a podcast. And I'm not, I think part of it was like, I was always trying to learn, like, let me listen to Hormozy. Let me listen to this. Let me listen. To... So it's like, this constant state of input. I, but I wouldn't even, I wouldn't, I would, you will get zero pushback from me on that. Yeah. Right. So you need silence. I don't disagree. He, he needs it, but it's hard for him. Right. But, but you are not adverse to doing hard things. Oh, I didn't say that either. I know, but so, I know that's true about you. So why I'm surprised that you know this about yourself and you're not challenging yourself. Well, some things are harder than others. I also think so, if you had start, to start small. Just a couple of minutes. Let's be quiet right now. See, I'm a really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I also think, I, I was this, even in the shower. I was putting stuff on. Oh, well, was you were like when people who were at who? What was I saying? People who were at war with themselves find like, quiet noisy. Yeah, that's me. You're not at war with yourself. Oh, for sure. What do you mean? Uh, like in in any number of ways. Give Give me an example. The Harvard thing. And you work through it. I'm still working through it. He got into Harvard. But you have imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we all do. He's killing the dummy. Do you? Hmm? Okay, so do you think that we have moments where we question, or do you think like we live there, or do you think it depends? I think it depends. I think there's. I think there are variations of both, and I think um, I have exhibited both. That one particularly was one that I lived in for the better part of two plus decades there are other ones that are fleeting i'm not gonna cry the uh i don't cry it's for sissies um <laughs> the uh no it's uh that's not good we're trying to overcome stigmas men can cry crying uh, I, is very listen, cathartic i cried in front of 200 people in nashville it's fine did you cry okay. i missed that it was very brief oh yeah okay. okay um but that one would be one that was extensive okay um that would be one that was extensive uh where the other ones are not that big of a deal so Okay. I mean, not that big of a deal. They're not like, uh, I don't live in them. Okay. Where I'm just like, ah, I'm like, I can, I work through that. And I'm like, that's a thought that you made up and that's not accurate. Where the other one was like, that was a legitimate identity yeah. that I not only internalized, but externalized any number of ways on a very regular basis. Still? Or are you doing? Uh, working through it, but cool. very, like, yeah, but like have, have recognized it like had a had a moment recognize like a, a significant impactful moment recognize it and then continue to work through it but it's significantly better uh but yeah when you live for something when you, when you live in that identity for 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 decades it, it's very hard to yeah. shift over so but you know what progress over perfection look at 100%. you moving the needle forward so, we can uh, unpack fern literally forever i oh, mean but we are it. getting booted out of this place yeah. so kicking us out let's end let's end with this a CEU's mental fit course, but and you can find that at dot com with yeah. all the courses, all the courses in the, so in the online. Uh, there's a, I think it's in the top banner online courses. Um, a couple of pieces of advice, two to three pieces of advice for gym owners with regard to mental health that you think would be valuable. Uh, one, start having those conversations. Don't be afraid of that topic. Um, it's only going to help us to normalize that part of our health, which is super important. And, you know, mental and physical health don't live in silos. They work together. They are part of us, and we have to start treating it that way. Um, you're only going to help accelerate your the potential of your members by, you know, bringing that to light. Um, and then the second part of that would be the next tip, which is be prepared be prepared for the unknown and unknowable, right? You know, have a list of resources, connect with providers in your area. You don't have to bear the burdens of your members. You can simply validate, acknowledge it, and be like, hey, man, that's really heavy, and I want to see you be the best version of yourself. Let's get you so, so, yeah. connected with someone who's going to help you so that way you stay going in the gym and you get the help that you need here. Help them create a team. That's it. Cool. You know, and, and now we've got, like, this support system going for them. No different than you would for your fitness. You Correct. You want to be a better runner, yeah. seek out this guy. That's right. Very um, cool. And It's a and, good starting point. And you said Fern was broken or not? No one's broken. No one's broken. Don't let me hear you say that. Cracked. I'm broken. Cracked. Yeah. But he Repair, does Repairable. We do have to talk about this silence thing. We'll work on it. It's a work in progress. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.